Pastor Nancy preached the first paragraph of my sermon, so I'm trying to figure out what I need to share with you. Why don't I just read it? It's good to hear anyway. Today is what? Pentecost. The day we celebrate the birth of the church, and more importantly, the coming of the Holy Spirit. That took us a few seconds to get to, but I'm glad we got to it, right? It's the day when Jesus' promise was fulfilled that he would always be with his disciples by giving them a guide, <clears throat> a teacher, a helper, and a shepherd. It was God's way of saying, I must go with you. And at Pentecost, the Spirit has come to walk alongside of us and in us for good until Jesus comes again. At its very root, Pentecost is about God being with us. Have you heard that at some other point in the church year? When have you heard that? When? Advent and Christmas, yeah, and? Yes, at Easter, thank you. Let's make sure we put it all in, into perspective, right? It's the same message as Christmas and Easter, the birth and the resurrection of Christ, who is God with us. On Pentecost, it is the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, gifted to all believers to form them into one body. No longer would the Spirit come and go as in the Old Testament. Now the Spirit is here to stay in us, with us, and through us, and especially through the church. It's a mistake for the Christian to go through life without relying on the Holy Spirit. As we find out often, we can easily get lost and wander. But today, we recognize God's Holy Spirit who if we will listen, will always guide and direct us and deliver us to safety. Thank God for this gift that we don't talk about enough and for God's presence with us, especially as we celebrate the Holy Spirit today. Now, Pastor Nancy and I opened worship by sharing a little bit out of uh, the scripture in Acts 2, which is the story of the birth of the church, the story of Pentecost. I moved just a little bit further into Acts 2 uh, for Peter to give his words directly uh, regarding the coming of the Holy Spirit. I don't want us to stay focused on that story because I'm pretty sure that a very large majority of us already know that story about tongues of fire, wind and tongues of fire and people speaking different languages. I would like us today to focus, after getting through a few reminders of what Pentecost means, uh, to focus on what the Holy Spirit calls us to do, as we heard in Paul's words, especially in the book of Romans. I'd like for us to be intensely practical this morning with you today, because brother and sister, there are significant needs that must be met by us, not just as the body of Christ, the big C church, if you will, but much more specifically at this time in the life of Lehman Memorial Church, our church. Several of those needs are in regard to what is almost always mentioned as Lehman's number one ministry to the community. Just for grins and giggles, what is that number one ministry? The food pantry, right? I will connect the dots for you between the food pantry and Pentecost as I go through the sermon. But first, let's just take a few minutes to remind ourselves of what Pentecost did and still does as the moment in history when the gift of the Holy Spirit came to stay. John 14, 16, and 17 again. And I will ask a father, Jesus says, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Why do you think Jesus uses those words about sending an advocate who will never leave you? At what point in Jesus' ministry is Jesus offering these words? Do you recall? 
when he's about to leave, right? When he's about to do what he came to do. No longer be with them. This is part of his farewell discourse. He continues, the world cannot receive him, that is the Holy Spirit, because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. I don't want you to miss the significance of that statement. That, brothers and sisters, is Jesus' reference to himself. The Holy Spirit was living with the disciples as Jesus was with the disciples. And he is the same Holy Spirit that would be in them later. Meaning, when the day of Pentecost came for good. Jesus is God, and Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Same one God, three different personalities. We ringing any bells? Right? We're talking about the Trinity. And yet, number one reminder of Pentecost is this. Jesus made good on his promise. We get to know him. We receive the Holy Spirit, not just with us, but in us. Which leads to reminder number two. You have a superpower. Underneath the clothes you wear is not an S. It's an HS. Okay? It's more like a supernatural power. What does this mean? We are reminded that as believers, we are promised the gift of the one who comes alongside of us like the buddy you always wanted to have. One who will sustain us and guide us when it gets difficult. One who is an advocate. One who stands up for us. One who will never leave. We can bring people to Christ, grow people in Christ, and serve people for Christ because the Holy Spirit lives in us. We can see past our personal circumstances of age or health or life situation and live with power, supernatural power, until we're done here. Reminder number three, which was already given, I'll say it again, happy birthday to us. Along with the gift of the Holy Spirit comes the gift of the church born at Pentecost. As part of God's genius plan, he gave us to each other to encourage and to equip and to serve the whole church, to be the church, to do what the church does, which is to make disciples for Jesus Christ. Reminder number four, God gave us gifts to help us out as his church when the Holy Spirit came. There are guiding gifts, and we could search any number of scriptures, especially in the New Testament, some of those are words of wisdom and knowledge, um, having a special gift for those words, and faith as a special gift. There are speaking gifts, prophecy, teaching, exhortation, that's preaching, administration. There are miraculous gifts, speaking in tongues, doing healings and other miracles. And today we're taking on the service gifts, gifts that aren't seen as much because they are usually behind the scenes but are part of everything that goes on in ministry. Like all the other spiritual gifts, gifts of service are an extremely important part of the body, and just about everyone has them to share. I'm going to say that again. Just about everyone has them to share. You and I have been given an incredible power we have been given the power to turn people's lives around. That power is the Holy Spirit. When the Apostle Peter realized it, he preached to thousands as they turned to Christ. You may not be a preacher, but you have a voice and a life God wants to use. You have hands and feet 
with which to serve. And those are God's gifts to you to be gifts to others. The gift of service comes from the Greek word diakonai, which is where we get our word deacon. It is simply translated servant or service or ministry. Those with the gift of service enjoy doing routine tasks around the church or on the church's behalf, regardless of how they affect others. Those with this gift often enjoy doing little-noticed, behind-the-scenes tasks, and they do them cheerfully. Maybe I should say that again. And they do them cheerfully, right? Service-gifted people are usually the ones doing things that have to get done for things to operate well. Listen to the section of Romans 12 again, starting in verse 6. In his grace, God has gifted us different gifts for doing certain things well. So, if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is encouraging others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. And then in verse 13, Paul says, When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Now consider our food pantry. Every Monday and Tuesday and Thursday, for years and years and years, there are multiple people involved in distributing food to those who need it, who live within a five-mile radius of the church. When church members and leaders and even those in the community have been asked, what's the number one thing in the community would miss if Lehman no longer existed, the pantry is the number one answer. It takes a cadre of people to make that ministry work, and not just those working on the days when we're open for distributing food. It takes leaders and drivers and shoppers and daily helpers, those who know how to write grants, those who empty delivery trucks, stock shelves, carry heavy boxes, bag food, run to Wawa to get their leftovers, and maybe a coffee along the way, drive to other food distribution places to keep our shelves full. Some of you who do those things are here today, and we want to thank you for you using your gift of service on behalf of the church and the community and for doing it faithfully. But I have a concern. The majority of our pantry workers are not members of nor otherwise are affiliated with Lehman Church. More people serve others through our pantry who are connected with other churches or simply serve out of the goodness of their heart. There are more people outside our church who are engaged in service in our church's name than from the inside. What's more, those who are able to help serve are dwindling and the needs of the pantry are more significant now than they have been since I have been here, and that's 2019. The shelves are not stocked fully. We are cutting back, offering more food than we normally would. We are keeping an eye on our monetary resources, and most importantly, we are losing a pantry leader as well as some other servants who are stepping back for personal reasons which is why I say this, and I hope you hear it clearly. If God needed some people with the gift of service to, prevent them, to present themselves to be used in ministry, he needs them now. He needs you to use your gift of service. The pantry is not the only place you can use your gifts of service, of course. Some people serve in AV support, audiovisual support, chancel or com other committees, uh, the choir, praise team, 
the prayer team, food preparation for dinners, gardening, office support, and the list goes on and on and on. And we're thankful for those people as well and for the use of their gifts of service. However, there's always a however, isn't there? If some of us aren't serving anywhere, that means that others are having to pick up your slack and do what God has called us to do together. Or, as we as a church are not doing all that we are called to do because there are not enough laborers. Do you have the gift of service? And if you do, are you putting it to use? I remember making a plea to all of us several months ago now. I told you your church needed you more so now than in the past. We needed people to step up and serve. Guess what? We still do. Now, not everyone has the gift of service, but a large majority, as I said before, of us do. Frankly, we can all do something, can't we? Doing so is part of what it means to be the church. We are being the church when we serve the church, which in turn serves others. That was Pentecost. And we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. So here's what I'm guessing, or I'm not guessing, I'm suggesting this on this Pentecost Sunday. Your pastors are challenging and encouraging those of you who are currently not serving, currently not serving, to identify your gift and find a place to do so. Pastors know it's best for us to personally ask people in the congregation to serve, but it's not going to hurt to once again make this plea. It's Pentecost. Please consider how God is calling you to use your gift of service and don't wait for permission. Nobody has to tell you it's okay. If God has given you the gift, go use it. Serve the church, serve one another, serve God. God has already granted you all the permission you need to serve. As far as the pantry is concerned, maybe we could each be a part of meeting this Pentecost challenge, of stepping up into Holy Spirit-guided service. We'd like to give you the opportunity to get very practical in your service. In your spark this morning, you can read about two opportunities. First, please bring back to church with you next week at least one item, at least one item, to be placed on the pantry shelves and then offer to someone who needs it. Do you think you might be able to do that? That is not encouraging at all. Thank you, at least one. The shelves are pretty bare. You can go look for yourself after worship if you'd like. Just go walk down into Wilgus and look around. Second, today after the second service at about 11.45 or so, we'll be gathering in Fellowship Hall to outline the ministry as we see it moving forward, giving all of us an opportunity to consider where we might be able to help serve in one of those areas I already mentioned. And if the pantry isn't your thing, you can call the office tomorrow and give Diane and Lisa your name and your contact information, if we don't already have it. Tell them you are ready to serve where you could best be used. And you can bet your pastors and other leaders will find a place for you. But you take the initiative. You take the gift that is latent within you, if it is just waiting to be used, and put it into good use. I can't think of a more appropriate time 
for you to get involved. I'll say it once more. Your church needs you. The church needs you to use your gifts. If you're not sure where to start, pray. But don't pray too long without getting your feet wet somewhere. We're so thankful to, for those of you who are using your gifts and anxious to see all of us finding a place to serve. Listen, the pay is terrible, but the rewards are out of this world. If you are a follower of Christ, you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. You are part of the body, the church, and you have been given gifts by the Holy Spirit to serve others. Please don't let them sit idle. Your brothers and sisters in the faith need you, and you need them, and the community needs the church. You have heard it said that you are blessed to be a blessing. It is also true that you have been gifted to be a gift in service to God, his church, and one another. It's Pentecost. Let's be the church and serve the church together. And if you agree with that, please say loudly, Amen. I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs>